Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, Oxhead Magic, and it's Jordan here. And Chris, hello. And this is a very special video, ladies and gentlemen, as Wizards of the Coast have sent us not one, but two pre-release kits for Magic the Gathering Dominaria for me and Chris to do a battle. So, without further ado, let's go discover the set of Magic the Gathering Dominaria. And so, welcome to our first pre-release. Uh, we got packs from Wizards of the Coast. And as you see, me and Chris are about to do a battle. Hello. And, and uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's uh, crack some packs, my friend. So, so, all oh, right. Uh, so we got all the cameras running. It should all be working fine. <laughs> if it doesn't, we're gonna have to come up with something. And <laughs> as usual, Wizards are making it. There we go. Like How come that. I can I can like whip that open in store, no bother? Yeah. <laughs> yes, come to this and I can't do it. Right, so ooh, new box, new style. I do like the outlay for this. That is quite sweet. So in a pre-release kit, you are going to get six boosters of Magic the Gathering Dominaria. You get a spin down life counter as well as a guide on how to build a deck. This is very important. It's rather useful for new players. It tells you all about mana curve, how many creatures you want, how many spells, and more importantly, how many lands you need to be running in your deck. You're also going to be getting two premium time-stamped foil cards. One is going to be a rare or mythic, and the other is going to be a legendary creature. So bear in mind that the legendary creature can be rare, mythic, or uncommon, because there are quite a few uncommon legendaries in the set. Or promos first, or should I open mine? Uh, I'll let you have the honors. Okay. Do you know what I wish they'd done? I wish they was actually blacked out so you couldn't see inside. So it's like a, another little mini booster. Would you? What do you think? Mm. I think I would have been great. So we get actually two promos with this, which is really sweet. And I get. I'm not looking at mine. So I get a daring archaeologist. Mm. Uh, three, three, four. Uh, in the battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your grave to your hand. Whenever you cast a historical spell, you get to put a 1 1 counter in. Nice. Not, not a bad synergy in this. Yeah. I believe there's some legendary things in this set, so might be might be a good build rank up. And the other one? Ooh! Whisper Blood Liturgist. 4 mana legendary human cleric. And you tap it, sacrifice 2 creatures, and return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Sure, dude. No. Yes. <laughs> and they're both timestamps, so that answers, my, uh, answers me a good question. So yeah, that's sweet. All right, what right. do you get? So let's do this one first. And I've got, ooh, the first eruption. So that's nice. Saga. The first eruption deals one damage to each creature with flying. Adds two mana, and then sacrifice a mountain. If you do, the first eruption deals three damage to each creature. Ooh, that is very nice. And then the other one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know Adam's gonna want this. Why? Can't be that. Joda, Lord Mage Eternal. Oh, that is so pretty. That looks awesome. Oh, Fist of Suns on a stick. Oh, Damn. nah, bad. I like the art. Okay. I will say the foil on this one. That does look stunning. So, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, I think without further ado, um, shall we just start diving into our packs and then get that filming? Yeah. Okay. Best of luck. Good luck. Obviously, uh, mythic wise, I got Demon Lord Belzanok. Very good card draw engine, technically. You know, if you get over four CMC, you get to draw maybe a couple of cards, lose a couple of life, but that's what black does. <laughs> black, all oh, black, all about dealing damage to itself and getting card draw out of it. And plus, it's a 6 6 fly with trample. Fairly decent in the set, actually, quite frankly. You know, there's not many other creatures that block it in the air. Um, there's, you know, a couple of double blockers here and there, but yeah, so, so quite a good card, actually. Second card, obviously, I was excited about was, oh, I'm sorry, Goblin Chain Waller. Well, Switch. A because I pulled the, the big wizard, the wizard lord, and B a lot of the stuff that sort of main cards I wanted wanted to use was there, especially with a lot of the kicker cards like the. Um, Okay, so Chris, you won the rival. 
Right, cool. Let's begin. Best of luck. Yeah. Mountain, your turn. Okay, I'll do. I will play a mountain and I am going to tap for Gitu Lava Monster. Okay. Lava Runner, sorry, Lava Runner. And uh, if I had two more instances of in my graveyard, I was able to uh, swing, but I can't. So <laughs> pass turn back to you. Island. Mm -hmm. Pass the turn. Untap and draw. I'm then going to play a swamp. And then I'm going to declare attacks for one. Yep, take one. Okay, and then I will pass the turn to you. Mounting your turn. On top, draw. Okay, uh, swing for one. Yep, take one. Okay, and then we'll pass the turn. Island? Yep. Okay, cool. Colladian Raider? Yep. Discarding uh, Mountain? Alright, okay. So I get to draw a card. Oh, so you get to rummage? Yep. Yeah, okay. Right, um, pass the turn. Must be nice having that four mana roll of that. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to play a Stronghold Confessor. Okay. It's a 1 1 for 1 uh, with Menace, and if it was kicked, it would come in with 2 1 1 card. Nice. And I will. Clear attacks. Mm, take it. Okay, take one. Okay. Okay. Uh, pass turn. Yep. Tap to Murphy Trickster. Okay, what does he do? So when it ends battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls, it loses all abilities to win the turn. So tap this. Okay. And go to declare attacks. Yep. And swim for four. Ow. Down 16. Pass turn. At the end step, I'm going to ship and fire, doing two damage to the Murphy Trickster. In response. I'm going to shoot and fire this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so creatures die. Nice. Pass them. Draw. Okay. Draw. Going to swing for one. Yep, take one. Okay, so you're down six now. Okay. And I'll then play a Kelden Warcaller. Yep. Then uh, when it attacks, I get to put a law counter on a target saga I control. And I currently have no sights. So mm -hmm. pass the turn. Alright, untap. Sure. Okay. Island? Mm -hmm. Four, five, six. I give you Chronicler for its kick cost. Okay. So when it's kicked, return target instant sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. I'm going to choose Shearer and Fire. Shock sure, card. Okay. Um, yeah, swing for four. Uh, I take four. I'm down to 12. Your turn. Okay, on tap. Draw. There we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> Look at this land, 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 land. Fabulous. Right. Um, I'm going to. Hmm. Intriguing. Hmm. Okay. That is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that is really, oh no, I can't do it that way. Ah. No, that won't work. If I do it that way. Okay. So. Hmm. I'm going to. Uh, Declare attacks with both. So this has got menace and so it's two two. No blocks. Okay, so I'll take three. Down a thirteen. Okay. I'm then going to play the first eruption. 
Okay. So that ends the battlefield, it gains a law counter. First law counter gives it, deals one damage to each creature without flying. So my stronghold confessor dies. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> and then um, I will pass the turn. Okay. Take five. Down to seven. Set four. Yep. Major horror. And what does Joya do? Whenever you cast an art historic spell, draw mm. a card. Right, okay. Um pass the turn. Okay, so untap. Uh okay, draw. Mm -hmm. This will trigger on the stack. So, uh, okay. yeah, whenever you draw a card, a law counter. Okay. So hang on, do I have to cast in the law? Oh, that's an interesting one. So, do I lose two mana immediately? So I get two mana. This is in the draw. Oh, no, no. Your draw, so oh. beginning your oh, first sorry, main phase. Sorry, first main phase, yeah, that's right. Okay, so draw, trigger. Okay, so I have one red mana floating. So, sorry, I have Three. two two red mana floating. Two red mana. Apologies. So good. Uh, right, I'm going to uh, play a swamp, mm -hmm. tap for red mana, that's three, and play a goblin chain world. Right, with that on the stack. Correct. I'm going to shoot and fire this. Okay. Sure thing. I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> what do you mean? Why would I do such a thing? I know, I know what you're trying to do. Just, just so, so mean, great. You just, just, just you won't let me have any fun. So, Goblin Chain Well enters the battlefield and it deals one damage to you and each yeah. creature you control and each planeful you control. Well, I control no planeful because at the minute. It's fine. And then I will pass the turn. On tap. Is that what this is? Island? Yep. Combat swim with everything. Uh, block the 4-4. Four, four. Uh, the 4-3, sorry. Yep, so that dies. And that dies, and I'll take 4. Down yep. 3. Your turn. Okay. Uh, so, untap, draw, trigger That's, on the stack. Yep. Um, bolt of the world. <laughs> bolt of the world. Uh, so yeah, sa oh, sacrifice a mountain. Oh no, hang on. This is if I sacrifice a mountain. Okay. So ah, right. Okay. So sorry. No, I am going to choose not to do that. Okay. <laughs> How about to keep my board? Uh, that. That still goes on the stack. And that dies. Yeah. So I, I choose not to board loop. Okay. I I realised after casting the card, and after rereading it again, that actually the third trigger is a mere trigger, and so it's your choice and. Being I only had one mountain on the field and more red spells in hand, I kind of had a big decision to make of whether to do it or not, and I decided not to. I'm glad I did. <laughs> if you had a second mountain, would you have activated it? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to. Uh, Death Blooming Pallid. Okay. 3 2, and when it dies, it creates a 1 1 sapling. Okay. And I will pass the turn. Okay, that's happening, lady. <laughs> I have a feeling you're not going to allow it to stay on the board. <laughs> okay. Uh, pass. Okay, alright, untap. Draw. Help be stabilised. I think we might have. Hopefully, we have. Okay, um. I'm going to <laughs> Oh I don't want to do that. I do want to do it but I'm not going to do it. Um hmm. I'm going to play a valid omnivore. Okay. Um 
So it's a 3-3 three, three, and I can pay one and sack another creature and it gets plus two, plus, uh, plus two until the end of the turn. Yeah. And if the sapling is sacrificed, that's where I gain one life. I get two life. Yeah. I'm going to declare attacks. Got that on nine. Okay. And then I pass the turn. Okay. Play Memorial to Genius tapped. Mm -hmm. Your turn. Genius tap. Draw. Okay, I am going to um, pay four and five for fiery intervention. Um, you get to choose one, deal five damage to target creature or destroy target artifact. I am going to do five damage to this. Yep. And then. And then I am going to swim to the team. Yep. Um, four, six, five. So this is for nine. Uh, I'll block that. Okay. All right. So I'll take six. Down three. And then I will pass the turn. Um, that would have been about two turns ago. <laughs> Draw two cards. Okay, alright. Okay. So when it is battlefield, I gain three life. It's a navigator's compass, yeah, okay. And you can what, tap it to. Until the end of the turn, tag land, you can also come basic land type in addition to the other position. Oh, okay, alright. I think I'm just buying time here. Your turn. Okay. Uh, which one's this one? Uh, get to Journey Mage. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another wizard, it deals two damage to each opponent. Yeah, so it won't. Happen. Okay, alright, so untap. Unfortunately. And draw. Uh, oh, I can't do that, can I? Um, but I. Oh, I can do this though. So we will fight fire with fire. Doing five damage to this. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, can't do it. Sweet. Anything. Okay, so we'll move on now to game two. Here we go. So I'm just going to play an island. Both you and Chris took rounds. Um, yeah, my my first opening hand was um, it <laughs> it was four no sorry five black creatures and two and two two mountains and I was like. No, definitely not. Mulligan that. Uh, went down to six, and six didn't look much better. But I did have, I did have two swamps, and I did have a howling golem in hand. And quite frankly, that card is insane. And all I needed was ideally a mountain to be on top of my deck. <laughs> and I'm a look sack. Lost <laughs> turn. Okay, so. Draw step. I'm going to play a mountain past turn. Okay. Play an island? Yep. So, tap one. And play it. fire attack scissor assistant. Yep. So, whenever I cast a historic spell, scry one. Ooh, that's nice. Cast the short <laughs> sword. <laughs> Trigger on this. Scry. Scry, yep. Nice little synergy, Chris. Keep on top, your turn. Chris has got blue red historic on the draw. He's invented a new deck archetype already. Ooh, yeah. Next deck deck. Next deck deck. Play a mountain and I'll pass the turn to you, sir. Okay. What do I feel the feeling? I'm gonna get hit in the face with a magpie carrying the sword. <laughs> Equip. <laughs> this has to be done. Swing for two. <laughs> no! Oh, take two. <laughs> your turn. Draw. Okay, play a swamp. And I'll tap for three to play Howling Golem. Cool. Uh, so it's a 2 3, and when it attacks or blocks, each player gets a draw card. So it's Howling Mine. Sweet. Howling Mine on a stick. Not nice. Bad. Not bad. But apart from Howling Mine was at the beginning of each of key. So yeah. Mm. So yeah, on your way, Chris. Cool. Tap. Mountain. Um, yep, yeah, swing for two. Yep. Down 16. Your turn. 
This bird has got this bird's got some reach with this short sword, I'll tell you that. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever ever seen. You're going to die by I'm a bird. To, I'm going to die by a bird carrying a short sword. Thank you, wizards. <laughs> Thank you, kindly. Um uh, mm. I'm going to attack, so we both get to draw a card. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You can, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then um, you take two down. Take two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then I am going to. Hmm. Intriguing. What to do? Play Whisper, Blood Liturgist. Okay. For four. Cool. Let's turn to you, sir. Tap and draw. Swing the air for two, with a little magpie. Down 14. Um, yeah, let's do this. Tap one, shiver and fire this. So you're shiver and firing my whisper. Okay. Yep. So I'm not letting you to sacrifice and return any stuff. Okay, right, whisper dies. Your turn. Untap, draw. I'm going to play a Swamp, mm -hmm. I'm going to pay 5, so this is with the kicker cost for Skizix. Yeah. The down shift is from Rare, so he gets to, uh, he has Trample, he has Haste, and then beginning game step, unless it wasn't kicked, you have to sack it. Okay. Then to cloud attacks, we both draw a card for the mine. Okay. And then I am hitting you for 7. Yep, go down <laughs> 11. <laughs> and then pass the turn to you, good sir. Canadian Raider. So okay. when he is backfield, get to discard a card. It's rummage. Yeah. Oh. oh, that's a face of anguish, that is. He can't do that. Do shit. Yep. Oh, he's this guy the Skizix. Ooh. Okay. Okay, that's handy. That is handy. Yeah. Let's hit you, keep you. Swing. Okay, down to 12. Your turn. Right, on the top. Draw. Play a mountain. Yep. And then going to... Hmm. I'm going to cast... This way. Okay, I'll do fiery intervention, dealing, choosing the deal five damage to this creature. Good, you're not doing little. Then I will swing you for seven. Yep. Down four. And then I. Oh, we also get to draw a card off the golem. That's all right. Yep. Sorry. Okay, and then I will pass the turn. Okay. One tap. Mountain. Yep. Yep, Academy Journey Mage. Okay. Where's so it? when it enters battlefield, turn target creature and opponent controls to its own sound. Return that. But why? <laughs> don't want to make you pay the mana reckon. Oh, why, Chris? Oh, I do it. Okay. And it's your turn also now. Uh, at the end step, I will shiv and fire the bird. Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like getting hit in face by a magpie <laughs> for, for two damage a turn. Okay, I'm going to draw. Okay, I'm then going to um, pay five again to do Skizix kit. Yeah. Of what you're going to do, yep. And declare attacks, we get to draw a card. Okay, and block. Block, okay, so you're. Okay. So, no, no, just trample. Three, four, 
So, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Good games, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what overall, what have you learned for pre release, the actual pre release, we'll be doing this weekend? Don't force yourself into all two colours. Um, have a look at your poll fully and see what you like. But I definitely think if you're going to go Wizards, definitely Blue Red. If you can, do Elves as well. The Elves are ridiculous. So, so generally, everything you say is just play anything. Yeah, just, <laughs> just five colours. Just five colours. Five colours good stuff. Yeah. yeah. You've actually got oh, cards. Unless you've got, 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 got elves, then just go <laughs> on the green. <laughs> so, what have you learned from this early pre release to take to this weekend? Um, definitely have to look at where the removal is. There's quite a bit of different removal in all the different colours now. Also, synergies with the legends and what mechanics, you know, historicals, historics are quite sweet. The sagas are really, really good as well. And if you can get them. If you get the right sort of mix together with sagas, it can be really powerful sort of thing. But yeah, but I'm very excited for the pre-release. Can't wait. I'm excited to uh, try out and see how it goes. What's awesome about pre-release then? Uh, what's awesome about it? It's the fact that you've got uh, a whole bunch of new players, um, or even returning players, or even in the end experienced players as well, who don't know the set. It's the first time they're going to be playing with the cards, so they get to learn all the interactions together. They get into uh, battle with new cards, new synergies, and it's just generally all around a really good, fun environment to play in. Uh, the benefit as well is you can find loads of stores are doing it through the Wizard Store Locator, and you just get a lot of good sense of camaraderie with your friends. You know, there's you can while you're deck building, you can ask someone to look over, look, you know, what do you think of this, and you know, they can go yes or no. And uh, yeah, it's just generally it's nice. It's always a fun friendly atmosphere during a pre-release sort of thing. It's not it's not like when you're playing at a GP, everything's very serious all of a sudden and very oh no I'm only looking out for number one. <laughs> and it's what I love about uh, going to a pre-release. So yeah, so it's all about the camaraderie.